Hello guys and welcome back to Planet 40k, the Necrons channel. Now we've got another full review for you today and this time we're going to be talking about the Catacomb Command Barge from the Necron Index. Now before getting into today's video guys, we do have other channels, just wanted to get your attention on that. We've got a Space Marine channel, we've got a Tyranny channel and we've also got a Chaos Demon channel, although the Chaos Demon channel isn't actually hosted by myself, but if you would kindly subscribe to those channels that would be fantastic. But let's get on to the full review for the Catacomb Command Barge. So as always we're going through the data sheet, unit combos, index rules, enhancements, stratagem, tactics, scoring and pros and cons. I'll probably stop going through this list guys but yeah let's put it the last time I do that. But we're going to be going through all those things in this video. So let's kick this off with the data sheet. Now data sheet wise the model is going to be equipped with a Gorse Cannon and Staff of Light. You can swap out the Gorse Cannon for the Tesla Cannon. You can swap out the Staff of Light for the Overlord's Blade. And you can also take a Resurrection Orb. We'll get onto all those things in a moment. Keywords of notes, well keywords in fact. Vehicle, character, fly, Catacomb Command Barge. And just note here that it is not a noble, it's not got that keyword anymore. That's the rear of the data sheet. Let's flip it over and let's check out the juicy stuff. So let's start with the actual stats. Movement of only 9 inches, so it has gone down from 12 inches to 9 inches. You'll find that a quite a common thing now with the Necron Index. We're slightly slower than we used to be, which kind of gives the, the battlefield roll, makes it a little bit different, and we'll get onto that in the battlefield roll section, in fact. Toughness has gone up, toughness 8, because vehicles and monsters have done that. So that's that's okay. It's still quite a light vehicle, but it always was. 3 plus armor save, 9 wounds, that hasn't, that hasn't changed at all. 6 plus leadership, and 3 on the objective control. Okay, not too bad. Now I'm going to skip over to the abilities on the right-hand side now. Deadly Demise, it's only one mortal wound when it does explode, as I said it was a light vehicle so therefore it's not going to be a massive one, not D3 or D6. It's got reanimation protocols, we'll go over that in a moment as well. And the two unique abilities, first one is Carrier Wave, which is an aura. While a Necron's unit was within 6 inches, add one to the objective control characteristic that the models have. That's pretty nice, the fact that it's an aura is also pretty nice. Bear in mind this hasn't got the leader keyword so it's not going to be attached to any units and that's I mean that's good and it's bad now it's probably bad to be honest with you because look out sir in 10th edition isn't a thing it's not got the lone operative ability it's not got stealth or anything like that so it can be targeted right from turn one it doesn't matter where it is as long as there's range and visibility it can be targeted so that's a little bit of a problem but that's why it's got an aura ability because it hasn't got the leader ability that's the first one pretty good we're going to go over that as well in a little bit more detail in the unit synergy section of this video. The second one is the advanced quantum shielding. So each time an attack is made against this model, if the strength is better than our toughness, subtract one from the wound roll. Now at first glance that looks pretty cool, but I can tell you now for nothing, it's worse than it used to be. Now it's not that bad, it's not. it is still pretty good in fact. What you need to remember is this thing is toughness 8. So if it's a, if it's a strength 16 weapon going up against our toughness 8, they would naturally wound on a 2 plus. Now of course with this ability you subtract 1 from the wound roll, so that puts it to a 3 plus, which makes it worse than it was in 9th edition, because you could not wound on a 3 plus no matter what. So that's why it is worse. Now the argument against that would be the inbound save, which we're going to get onto in a moment. It's now got a 4 plus, not a 5 plus, but to me that's not really part of the ability. The ability is something completely different. It can now be wounded on a 3 plus with the advanced quantum shielding but it's still good and it's still nice to have that and it does give it a little bit more resiliency anything with a minus one to wound is pretty good I mean it could be let's, let's take for example if it was strength 15 so not quite double strength 15 would mean it's still wounding on a four plus so you know swings and roundabouts with that one so it's got the four plus invulnerable save as we mentioned and it's also got the resurrection orb which I think is brilliant this edition in your opponent's command phase Infantry and mounted Necron units within 6 inches get to activate their reanimation protocols. So note it's only infantry and Necron's mounted units, so that would be your Tomb Blade, your Locust Destroyers and of course anything on foot. It's not going to apply to other things, but that's okay, it's still pretty good. The Resurrection Orbs in general are pretty good. Range Attacks, we've got the options here haven't we? So we've got the Gauss Cannon or the Tesla Cannon was the first sort of option that you came to, you know, that was the first crossroad in the data sheet. Let's go through the Gorse Cannon to begin. So it's lethal hits, very similar to all the Gorse weapons in the Index, or Gauss, Gorse, I always get that wrong, but whatever, right. 24 inch range, that's the same as it was. Three attacks. Now you hit on a 3+, plus, not a 2+. Plus. 
Strength is five, it used to be strength six, that's also gone down. And the AP has also gone down to minus two from minus three. That one I'm okay with. The damage, however, is, is you could call it neutral. I mean, it was damage D3, it's now damage two. I prefer damage two over D3 because D3, it was very janky. I mean, not as janky as a D6, of course, but you never knew what you were gonna get. And I'm a, I'm a person that likes to use averages. A lot. Some of you guys don't like averages, but I, that's the way I tend to work. And it doesn't always work when you've got D3 and D6. It, it's not that straightforward. You could just roll a 1. Sometimes you roll a 3 and you've got wasted wounds. It's I just rather know what I'm doing and I've got the damage too. I know exactly what I can do. So, for example, going up against, say, a Terminator, it's not going to work. as, as It's not going to be as good, not as efficient. So I wouldn't target them. So, yeah, that is the Gauss Cannon. I got that right that time, the Gauss Cannon. Don't forget the lethal hits as well, although what, there is half a chance of one of them being a 6, I suppose, but yeah. The Tesla Cannon, which was the second option, has the Sustain Hits 2 ability, that's pretty much as it was. A roll of a 6 will give you 2 extra hits. Yep. Used to be 30 inch range, it's now only 24. It's gone down. I mean, I didn't understand why it had a better range to begin with, but they're now the same. It used to have 3 attacks, it's now 4, so you're getting an extra attack. Not too bad. More chance of 6s as well. But this skill is again 3+, plus. strength 6, no P1 damage. The rest of the stats are as they are. I think I prefer the Gauss Cannon in this situation. The lethal hits and the two damage, of course. But against, you know, low toughness with one moon model kind of armies, then of course, Tesla is obviously the best way. The Staff of Light is another option here, which is 18 inch range, three attacks, hit on a two plus this time, strength five minus two AP, one damage. So it's kind of a, a mid ground between the Gauss Cannon and the Tesla Cannon. You get the AP, but you only get the, the one damage. And the strength is only five, but rather take the Overlord's Blade over the Staff of Light. Now I know you're losing some range attacks, three shots there, but I'd rather have some melee output. And the Overlord's Blade has the following: so it's got devastating wounds, four attacks, weapon skill two plus, strength seven. No, it's strength eight. Sorry, it used to be strength seven, didn't it? Minus three AP and two damage. So it used to be minus four AP. It was effectively a war scythe before, wasn't it? But I'd rather have that capability in melee than having the Staff of Light in melee, because the Staff of Light in melee. It's pretty mediocre. So yeah, I think I'd add the Gauss Cannon as well as the Overlord's Blade. And don't forget, this got devastating wounds as well. Yeah, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. You've only got four attacks anyway, but you're hitting on twos at least. Going back to the abilities for a moment, he has lost the Relentless March ability from 9th edition. So there's no extra, you know, adding one to the movement capabilities of core units. And my will be done, of course, is not what it used to be, and he doesn't have it now anyway. It's a completely different ability, and the Overlords have that. So that's the data sheet. It's okay. It sort of feels like it's it's okay. It's okay. I mean, the lookout sir with the lack of lookout sir in this edition, I think, is the killer. I think that's what makes it. It's a little bit stingy that one. But everything else is kind of as it was. It's kind of on par with the previous edition. Right onto unit combos next. Now the carrier wave aura pretty much works on any Necron unit within the Necron index. Anything within six inches gets plus one to their objective control, as we mentioned earlier in the abilities section. So that's working with virtually everything, right? But there's a unit in particular that I really wanted to kind of magnify here because, well, let's it's, it's just jump into it. It's the Canoptic Scarabs. Now they have slightly, well, I say slightly, they were the best unit in my edition. Now they've gone, they're not the worst, but they're down there. They're quite low, and partly because the objective control has gone to zero. So their use, I mean, the 9th edition, we had objective, objective secured, you throw them out, loads of wounds, cheapest chips, and they had obsec, and you were just taking objectives for fun, weren't you? Now you can't even do that. However, if they are surrounding the command barge within 6 inches, you're going to push their objective control from 0 back to 1. Well, not back to 1, they didn't have 1, but to 1. And when you've got a unit of 6 of them, for example, that's going to be 6 models with objective control on that particular unit. With the, you know, they've got the speed, they've got the, I say resiliency, there's just lots of wounds, and they're fairly cheap. I think it's 40 points for a unit of three. Not only that, but they've also got the swarm ability, which is when an enemy unit is within engagement range of this unit, of these scarabs, it's going to be a minus one to their object control. So you could be putting units to zero, uh, to zero object control. So there is a use there. There is something that you can do with these with the command barge. So I wanted to sort of highlight that one in particular because they're still they're cheaper than they were and you can get them to have a use. I mean, of course, there's the explosion ability that they've got as well. We'll go through this more when we do their full review. 
but that's pretty good now especially with reanimation protocols and you're simply bringing them back I quite like that. Now other units that are going to benefit from just having a command barge nearby would be the Tomb Blades or the Warriors for example because of the Resurrection Orb. It's working on infantry units as well as mounted units so that in fact would also include Locust Heavy Destroyers, Scorbit Destroyers, all of these units can benefit from that Res Resurrection Orb. Again it's in your opponent's command phase which I think is really key because maybe you've just lost some models in, in your own fight phase and you know you can be, yeah, the fact that you know you can be bringing some back before your opponent gets to do anything else to your units, and also it's going to be it's going to be happening before you actually, before your opponent actually starts to score points, score primaries, potentially secondaries. So it's going to happen before all that even happens. So you could potentially gain more objective control on an objective, and literally steal an objective from under their nose. So I really like the fact that virtually any unit here, or infantry and mounted units, can have this resurrection or working on them. Other units that could synergize with the command barge would be the Technomancer, just to heal it D3 lost wounds. And also you've got the Canoptic Reanimator to give it an extra D3 when it does use reanimation protocols, which of course would work alongside the resurrection orb as well, which is a pretty key piece of synergy in fact, probably one of the best synergies we've got in 10th edition. And then the last one I wanted to mention today was the Canoptic Spiders. I don't know where they stand in this edition, you know, but some people seem to still like them. But they've got the Fabricator Chlorate Auras, so units or vehicles within 6 inches get a 6 plus 4 no pain save, so that will include the Command Barge, it's a vehicle. 6 plus 4 no pain could get you out of dodge. And also the Gloom Prism as well for a 4 plus 4 no pain save against Psychic Attacks. Could be, could be valuable against Thousand Suns, Eldari, Tyranids for example. So that is the unit synergy, let's go on back into the index rolls because I keep putting this in the wrong order guys, remind me to change this order because this needs to be at the very top. But yeah, reanimation protocols, we all know what that is by now, I'm not going to go through it again. Command protocols, I don't like this you know, I've, I've had to say this in every video so far, I just don't, I think this is a bit of a weird combination, I don't, I don't, I mean it's good for us but I don't like the fact that we can do this, the Sovereign Coronal Enhancement Aura and units are effectively treated as if they're being led by a Necron's character and that could include any unit. It doesn't have to be a unit that needs to be led, it could be even like a Doomstalker, it could be a Doomsday Arc, it could be anything as long as that Necron character is within 6 inches and has that enhancement. A little bit of a, a bypass of the roles but that's what it is. So you can potentially do that with the Command Barge because of course the Command Barge cannot lead but with this enhancement you can. But actually, before we move on to the next subject, that's only going to work for the Awakened Dynasty ability, which is Command Protocols, and also the Stratagem. It does not work for any other abilities, so if you're putting this on, I don't know, a, a Chronomancer, for example, you're not going to get the Chronomancer's abilities to go onto the other units. A few people have said that in the comments, you can't do that. Right, onto the enhancements. We've just mentioned one already, but we're going to not... Well, I suppose that's in the, it's in the image here, so we may as well talk about it again, but the Veil of Darkness is an option. To zip around the battlefield. Now, of course, you're not taking a unit with him because the command barge is on its own. It's not leading a unit, it's not in an attached unit. So, you've probably got a better unit to take the Veil of Darkness on than the command barge. And also, it doesn't work from engagement range anymore either, which used to be one of the good things about it. You can just zip away from combat and get somewhere else. But if you wanted to go solo with your command barge, you could throw it behind enemy lines, perhaps, and you know, it's tanky enough to kind of take it, but I think you've got better options. The Sovereign Coronal, yeah we've kind of just mentioned that, that's going to save you on character taxes if you've just got one unit and surrounded by loads of loads of characters, uh, other way around, if you've got one character surrounded by loads of units with that enhancement that will save you on character tax, probably better served on bigger games. And the one I quite like is the Semternal Weave, which I would also use on the Transsector Tarn Shard, but you could also use it on the Command Barge, giving it a 4 plus feel no pain save, pretty decent, that's the kind of model you want to put this on. Because if you put it on a model that's in a bodyguard unit, it doesn't really need it. And there are other ways of giving them, giving those attached leaders feel no pains with all the crypt decks anyway. So I think it's better served on individual models that are able to take enhancements. Stratagems on note. Well, there, to be honest, in terms of stratagems, there's not really many that work with command bar. Some of them completely don't work anyway because it's like a destroyed model or destroyed Necrons character that's an infantry model. Maybe you get a bit of AP, you know, there's nothing that really suits the command barge. 
Unless you've got the Sovereign Corona, as mentioned earlier, then the stratagems get slightly buffed to the units that he's leading. But I, to be honest, I wouldn't use the stratagems on him. I just don't think they're, they're worthy. So I'm going to move straight into the tactics. So let's just begin with a few bullet points here before getting into the tactics. I mean, it's, it's slower, less resiliency, quantum shielding is worse, and no lookout sir ability. So yes, it does have a 4 plus in one now, but I feel like it used to be like a forward thinking choppy kind of cat, well, choppy kind of barge. I don't think that's its game anymore. It's not, it's definitely not that first, the first wave or second wave kind of attack anymore. That used to march with the melee units, used to march with the wraiths or the scorpet destroyers. I don't, I don't feel like that's its game anymore. It just feels like more of a tankier general that can sit and aid your, you know, objective control units. Or pumping up the objective control, maybe it's Scarabs, maybe it's Necron Warriors. And then using the Resurrection Orb, of course, which is the key synergy in this edition. I mean, it defends itself okay, but to me it almost feels like the Overlord that's riding the barge is just kind of getting into retirement. It's just slowing down a bit. It's lost its noble keyword on top of that, and it's just not as mobile as it was in its younger days. I think it's just more of a, a chilling out in the mid-ground level of the of the map, and that's sort of where it stands. I don't think it goes any further than that, like it used to. Scoring-wise, we just kind of mentioned it really. It's a huge assist to the primary objectives for your victory points, gaining extra objective control on those primaries, potentially some secondaries that relate to it, or mission objectives, of course. And of course, as well, you're going to get the resurrection orb to keep those units running that are going to score you those points. But to be honest, he does really feel like a glorified overlord now. I mean, maybe he, or he was all along, but I used to use him a bit more differently. Maybe that was because of objective control. No, I keep saying that. Maybe that was because of objective secured in 9th edition. We were taking advantage of, you know, tying up enemy units and then just taking over objectives and having, you know, having a fight that lasts forever. You can't quite do that now. So let's get on to the pros and cons. So pros, resurrection orb. In your opponent's turn, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. That's probably the main, well, one of the main reasons you take the command barge is the resurrection orb. But you've got options with the overlord, the lord, so there are other ways of doing that, but you've got one there. You've got the option of the enhancements because it's a character. You can add objective control to nearby units, which I think is the main reason to take this guy. And he's got a 4 plus in runnable save, which he didn't used to have. As for the cons, it's slower than it was in 9th edition. Now, he's not a leader, so that's also very unfortunate because he's going to be not having any bodyguards within the unit to protect him. He's missing out on full use of the stratagems because most of them just don't relate to him. He's also lost the lookout sir ability that kind of links to the leader thing really, doesn't it? Because he's not he's not really safe. Unless he's behind obscuring terrain, he's not safe. He can get targeted right off the bat. Quantum shielding isn't as good as in my opinion, only against strength 16+, plus, but it still is something to, to mention in terms of cons. Toughness 8 in 10th edition isn't quite what it was in 9th edition. Toughness 8 is a very light vehicle and uh, when you've got toughness 14 going around now or you've got strength 16 strength 18 weapons going around as well toughness 8 doesn't feel as tanky it's not mega killy i mean the overlord's blade yeah it's okay so it's, it's basically a war scythe isn't it it's not it's okay it's not doing much but as an individual unit with four attacks it's not doing a lot and finally it hits worse than before there with the ranged attacks as well as the Staff of Light, you're hitting on a 3+. plus. So yeah, overall, my feelings towards the Command Barge this edition, to me it was sort of an S tier, maybe A plus kind of tier in 9th edition. I think it's fallen off. Now, a lot of you guys probably like it because of the aura. It's still good. Objective control with other units nearby is very good. The Resurrection Orb is very good. But compared to what it used to be, I don't, I'm not as keen. I'm not as keen to take it and... I mean, it's, what is it? I think it's 150 points. You can just take a Necron Lord for, I think, 65 with the Resurrection Orb there. Put it in the unit that you're going to use it with anyway, whether it's Warriors or whatever. And then you can also get one of those Cryptex in that same unit to give the feel no pain saves or whatever kind of Cryptex model you're putting in there. So there's lots of, there's so much more synergy with the characters, with other characters that are on foot. So I feel like the Command Barge is sort of getting left behind. That's how I feel about it. But yeah, guys, just to let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm not going to rate it just yet. I'm still on the fence with the rating, so yeah, we're going to have to hold tight on the rating system. It will come at some point, don't worry about that. But guys, thank you all for watching. See you in the next one.